Now on BBC World News, extensive live coverage and analysis of the UK general election results, presented by David Dimbleby. Welcome to the BBC's Election Centre. Four minutes from now, when Big Ben strikes ten, we can legally reveal the contents of this, our exit poll. Until then, our lips are sealed, tantalising. This election must count as one of the most fascinating, unpredictable ever, with an exciting night ahead of us. All the results are going to come in here to be analysed, and they'll reveal whether David Cameron will return triumphant or Ed Miliband succeed in driving him from number 10, or whether it'll be a hung parliament making us wait hours or days before we know who gets the key to the door. Jeremy Vine has taken up residence in his virtual world to explain it all. Welcome to Downing Street, to our virtual Downing Street. Tonight, we'll see how near the winner of this election can get to the very door of number 10. Now, these are the seats won last time. The Conservatives came first, but they didn't have enough to reach this line and govern alone. Tonight, we'll see how close the parties get. But if neither David Cameron nor Ed Miliband can command a majority on their own, is there going to be a place for the Liberal Democrats at the Cabinet table? Or for Nicola Sturgeon's SNP? or Nigel Farage and UKIP, or one of the other Northern Ireland parties. 650 MPs to be elected, remember. 650 individual races in the constituencies to send an MP to the House of Commons. Every one of them vital to the outcome. And Emily Maitlis is going to be keeping an eye on all of them. Well, all that exit poll information is being loaded into our giant touchscreen as I speak. The results of talking to 20,000 people throughout the day just after they voted. In a few moments, I should be able to tell you which seats will be changing hands. The party leaders voted earlier today, joining over 46 million of us who had the right to do so. And in a few moments, the ballot boxes will begin to be rushed to the counting centres. We have a stellar cast at the key places. Sunderland is tipped to win the race to declare first. And Fiona Bruce is there. I'm in Sunderland, where, with the help of these sick formers and many more like them from two local schools, they hope to bring the first result of the night. That's Houghton and Sunderland South. They've done that for the last few elections and they're hoping to do it again this evening. And what's more, they want to bring that first result earlier in the evening than they ever have before. They have a secret weapon up their sleeve to help them. They're aiming for 10.40. Let's see if they can do it. And back here in the studio, up there above us, is Andrew Neil with a bird's eye view of the political scene. He's going to be joined by politicians throughout the night to discover why the election turned out as it did and what kind of government is likely to result. Yes, I'm up here in the gods to interview a procession of mere mortals and why they won, lost, or just managed a score draw. And perhaps most important of all, what are they going to do for an encore? Outside Broadcasting House in the centre of London, Sophie Rayworth is standing on a gigantic map of the United Kingdom, a perspective on the political battleground that's been so fiercely fought. This is our map which shows exactly where the political power in the UK really lies. We have made every constituency exactly the same size. One hexagon equals one MP. It is laid out in the colours of the 2010 general election. Shortly, we will take the whole thing up. And then, as the results come in, we will relay it and see how much the power balance has shifted. Here, Laura Kunzberg will be following reaction on social media, of voters and candidates alike, all the gossip and predictions. And the BBC's political editor, who day after day illuminates the political scene, Nick Robinson. 
So we better get started. First, with our exit poll, which even now I can't reveal until Big Ben strikes. 10, remember this is an exit poll, very carefully calculated, not necessarily on the nail. But here it is, 10 o'clock. And we are saying the Conservatives are the largest party. And here are the figures which we have. Quite remarkable, this exit poll. The Conservatives on 316. That's up nine since the last election in 2010. Ed Miliband for Labour. 77 behind him at 239, down 19 from the last election. And the other parties, the Liberal Democrats and the Scottish National Party. Look at the Scottish National Party. 58 for Nicola Sturgeon. That's every seat but one in Scotland taken by the SNP. Nick Clegg for the Liberal Democrats on 10. That's down 47 from the last election. UKIP, we're saying on two, treat that with caution because it's a new entry in a sense in this game, it's difficult to work out in places where UKIP hasn't stood before what it'll be like, but that's what we're saying at the moment. Two for UKIP. So that's the remarkable scene that our exit poll is revealing. We shall discover when the first results start coming in how accurate it is. But if that is the story, it is a quite sensational story. Nick. Sensational, David. An extraordinary night if 